That's awesome curriculum, okay? this in a very short period of time and that's not typical for me I usually get what I need like just a little bit over time this time around I really needed to prioritize um, my efficiency because I am expecting to be busier in this season now that we're completely into middle school and high school um, so a lot of the purchases that I made had that in mind. Uh, usually I buy all things digital. Um, I take my time and only buy when um, we're getting ready to get into things. And this time around, I kind of didn't do that. I prioritized needing to have all of these things just taken care of so that I could uh, really lean into the busy season. This is new for me, having like a whole stack of curriculum things to walk through. The majority of the things that I got came from Amazon. I also had an order from Oak Meadow. Um, I have a tiny Good and the Beautiful order. Um, I picked up some things from Ollie's. So that is what a majority of this, oh, and Book Outlet. So that is what we are going to be unboxing today. And let's just try to get through this. I'm going to try not to be super chatty because I do want to do separate curriculum videos for each of them at each of their grade, year, levels, whatever you want to call it. So I'm just going to go ahead and just try to really focus on taking these things out of the box and just kind of briefly um, telling you what it is. I've been building up our collection of graphic novels for a bit now. You guys know that I love uh, getting graphic novels that help us dive into history and provide an introduction for different historical topics and time periods and all of that. So I have The Librarian of Oswich. We Are Not Strangers. I really have been enjoying adding more and more graphic novels uh, to our shelves because you get to see the different types of uh, graphic styles and things, and I, I really have been enjoying seeing that. Next up, okay, these are the Critical Thinking Co. Sentence Diagramming. This one is level two. Level one is somewhere in here, but uh, one of the things that Savannah really wanted was um, a good amount of grammar language arts. Uh, so we kind of pieced together things that I felt like or I knew that she would really enjoy. So this one is Sentence Diagramming, level two. Then I have the Spectrum Language Arts six. And... Kendall and Savannah have really been enjoying these. Okay, now I have uh, Spectrum Writing Level 6. I really just uh, chose to get started with the grade level or the year that she's on. We really don't follow levels as much as we do, I mean, grades. We really don't follow grades as much as we do the level that they're on. But when I'm starting something new, usually I like to start wherever they're grade level is because we really don't know what to expect and if they breeze through it then they breeze through it and we move up to the next level um, and if they need to go back then we do the same but I like the flexibility and then you're not spending far too much um, and then finding yourself in a pickle and having to pivot when you've spent an arm and a leg so anyway uh, this is the spectrum writing I really just picked up so many of these so that she can pick and choose when she wants to um, add them to her language arts days. Uh, this one is the grade six vocabulary from Spectrum. And then there's that level one sentence diagramming. Next up, I have the Spectrum spelling. You'll see a lot of these, like I said, this is the grade six Spectrum spelling. I have daily grams. When Savannah said she wanted to just have like a boatload of 
language arts type, grammar type of workbooks. This was one that I definitely had on my list. So I just got the student workbook for grade six. We figured we'd start there and see how it goes. So I got that one. It's really come in clutch for me to like pre-open these. <laughs> Makes it super easy for us to get through this curriculum unboxing without it taking forever. So I have another Spectrum Word Study and Phonics Grade 6. Like I said, I just grabbed a bunch of these in the language arts department and let her just decide which two booklets or however she wants to uh, map out her schedule for getting in some study practice in the language arts and grammar department so there's heroes of world war ii i just think it's lovely it has a nice mixture of actual historical photographs and then illustration and then just really solid information so far so good I have enjoyed these. Two more by the same publisher, the Bushel and Peck books. This one is a side-by-side -side Declaration of Independence. Y'all, I love this. I really had to have this on my shelf. I am well aware of the toil and blood and treasure that it will cost us to maintain this declaration and support and defend these states. Yet through all the gloom, I can see the rays of ravishing light and glory. John Adams, in a letter to his wife, Abigail, July 3rd, 1776. I absolutely love studying history with the kids. To me, it just shows you how much truly like learning to educate yourself really helps um, rid yourself of confusion, especially nowadays, um, when everything is being summarized and opinionated. History is history, y'all. There's so much record keeping involved in history, and we just want to dive in and know these things for ourselves. It's nice to be able to have it in this format, where it makes it a little bit more fun and understandable. So this just kind of has exactly what it says, a side-by-side -side look at the Declaration of Independence. It tells you how to use the book, um, and it shows you the original text on one side, and it's plain English on the other side. And I feel like I love having this as a part of our shelves. And this is just another example of how, even though this was intended for a certain audience, it really, it, it really should be for everyone. And then the other one is The True West. Real story is about black cowboys, women sharpshooters, Native American um, rodeo stars, and the unsung explorers, builders, and heroes who shaped the American West. So again, I just really like the structure. Um... Combining the illustrations with actual imagery. That one is going on a shelf. Made our way through our first little stack. Next up, I will show you what I got from Oak Meadow. These are actually out of the box already because um, they opened the box and, and used it for our treehouse project that we were working on. So, <laughs> there is no box for these. And then also, the rest of what I got from Oak Meadow is actually in digital format, so there will be no box. I guess it's been one or two years now since trying out Oak Meadow, and I really enjoy it. I like the open-endedness of um, their curriculum and the fact that we can just kind of go down our rabbit trails. Like, it's so encouraging for personalizing the experience in learning. I really enjoyed it. So, um, I have U.S. History, Conflict, and Compromise. These are all the teacher editions. I kind of made a mistake in that I thought I'd be able to get the teacher edition and just kind of add um, in, add things into our days little bit by little bit as it fit. kind of didn't work that way because although this has all of the... Um, 
assignment information and those types of things in the teacher edition. And it has lots of good, yummy notes on how to help teach. It does not include a lot of the reading. So I did have to go back and purchase uh, the course book edition, and I did that digitally. And had I kind of understood that completely in the beginning, I would have done it the opposite way. I would have done the teacher's edition in the digital version, and I would have done the course book in the physical version, but that's okay. Um, no big deal. So I have U.S. History, Conflict, and Compromise, the high school teacher edition, like I said. Um, I have the United States History Teacher Manual 5. Um, Savannah is in her uh, year 6. However, this is our first time doing this. And I really, really wanted her to be on the United States History front. Um, because it would just fall in line with what Cameron is doing. And then also with what Kendall is doing. So I just chose to go ahead and start with this um, grade 5. And then I have civics. Um, this is, again, the teacher's manual, but I have the course book in the digital version. And then I also have English um, level 8. And I think this goes with that English level 8 as well. The 100 ways to improve your composition and creative writing. There were some other books that went along with the package that I kind of shopped around and chose to get elsewhere because it saved me so much money. These videos are always so hard for me. I speak a lot more slowly <laughs> than people on the internet. So it's hard for me to be clear and concise and try to be quick about it <laughs> because people's attention spans have become quite limited. Uh, but I'm trying to remind myself that that's okay. That if you guys want to watch my content, you'll stick around. <laughs> so, so I always kind of struggle with my cadence because I am a slower speaker. But I am often trying to speed it up so I don't completely lose anybody. Anyway, so this is my next box. Um, Cameron is going to be doing an author study. Maybe I'll talk more about that when I do his separate curriculum video, but we also wanted to have all of the Mitch album books on our shelves because they had a time this summer with um, working their way through all of the Mitch album books. So it kind of started from Tuesdays with Maury and was amped up when we saw um, Stranger in a Lifeboat when we were on vacation at the beginning of the summer. So I went ahead and tried to find all of the copies so we can have a whole Mitch album collection and then Cameron is going to be doing an author study this year. So this one is The Next Person You Meet in Heaven by Mitch Album to add to our collection. Another World War II graphic, The Jungle. This one covers the reality of immigrants in Chicago's meatpacking industry. The Drug Act in 1906. So this one is mostly black and white with pops of red, which I feel like are so impactful for the storyline. And next up, I have the graphic adaptation for The Kite Runner. So you do have to be careful with graphic novels because, again, they are graphic. So you do have to... Um, use your best discretion and see if your kids can handle um, the illustrations and the way they're depicted. But this one is the Kite Runner. Okay, let's move this aside. It's another graphic, To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. Another reason I like graphic novels, and maybe I'll talk about it in another video in more detail, but sometimes there is... There are works of literature that I want them to be familiar with, but I don't necessarily want them to spend too much time um, reading it in its entirety. And so graphic novels are also a really, really great way of being able to get it in quickly and familiarize yourself without spending too much time on it. All right, next up I have Displacement. This is another World 
War II era situation. And I really love the graphics. The illustration style in this one. Um, this one goes along... Let's move this over. Okay, that's better. This one is part of the reading list for Oak Meadows English 8. So, a couple of the books I did have. This one I didn't, so I picked this one up. The Magnolia Sword, A Ballad of Mulan by Sherry Thomas. I, I think there's one more in here. And I think this also, this also goes with that... Um, curriculum, Baseball in April, and Other Stories by Gary Soto. This is, this is the National Geographic Kids United States Atlas. This one goes along with Savannah's United States History from Oak Meadow. So I grabbed this one because it was less expensive on Amazon than it was on Oak Meadow. So I just went ahead and purchased this separately. This year is Kendall's year eight, and we had established that year eights for my kids are going to be their gap year. Um, and that's, in short, basically a year where we really, really start to focus in on their interests, like, more heavily. So this is his gap year, um, and he, part of his gap year is going to be heavy concentration on cooking. I did want to start focusing in on his cookbook collection, Northern Soul, Southern Inspired Home Cooking from a Northern Kitchen by Justin Sutherland. And like I said, I'll talk more about this in a future video, but I love the idea of building his cookbook collection. So, so this one goes along with the Oak Meadow U.S. History, Conflict, and Compromise, the high school course. through. So I have actually two books. You may, I think that's in this stack as well, but this is the um, Inquiry Edition, These Truths, A History of the United States. I had already started reading. Spoiler alert, I love the way this is written, and I am thoroughly enjoying working my way through pre-reading this, so... I picked this one up. I have the first I have the first book that's probably somewhere in here by Julie Lee. Continuing to add to our collection. The kids have read through a very large portion of our bookshelf. So I'm always trying to just kind of add to even if it's things that they're not necessarily completely interested in to begin with. Um, I'm always pleasantly surprised when they pick something up off of the bookshelf. So, again, this one is the second book in this series. Um, the first one is called Brother's Keeper. It, the first one's called Brother's Keeper and is somewhere in this stack. Another addition to our Mitch album collection, The Time Keeper. This was my first time looking at used books on Amazon, um, but I was able to find the whole collection um, mostly hardbacks, but a few I had to go ahead and do the paperbacks for our Mitch album collection. But this one is The Timekeeper. And, and then next up I have The Five People You Meet in Heaven. This is the first book, um, by Julie Lee, Brothers Keeper. So now I have both of those to add to the shelf. And this one I saw in the library when we were browsing around um, over the summer. It is A Seed in the Sun. <laughs> addition to our Written in Verse collection. Covers 1965's Delano Grape Strike and the demand for justice for farm workers' rights. So another addition to our Mitch album collection, The Magic Strings of Frankie Presto. Again, I found this one on the used 
section in Amazon. Another Mitch album for one more day. And then this is the other book I was telling you about. Um, so Cameron is going to be using the Inquiry edition, which is basically a textbook edition of this book. Um, and I have been reading through the ebook version of this one. It's basically the same book. It's just the other one is adapted for students. Um, so I've been working my way through this one. These Truths, A History of the United States by Jill Lepore. Nothing but good things to say about it so far. I'll keep you updated. I have a tiny little order from the Good and the Beautiful Science Unit. The Bird Watching Unit. So I actually purchased the unit digitally. And then I wanted to have this bird watching notebook. I don't know that that was the best option. <laughs> I feel like I should have just gone ahead and gotten it um, in the physical copy. It would have been a lot less expensive. But I'm just so used to going for the digital version that I went ahead and did it. <laughs> and spent a little bit more money than I would have had I done it the other way around. But anyway, this is the bird watching notebook. It just has notebooking sheets for bird watching. And I'm just excited to add to it. I've always loved the way that uh, their courses were laid out. Okay. All right. So this order is from Book Outlet. And like I said, I needed to kind of restash our bookshelf, even though. That causes another problem because your friend has to find more ways to store our books. But um, because they've read so much, so many things in our collection, we just need to fill them up. So I got these. Nowhere better than here. When impossible happens. Next up, I've got some classics. We're going to be working our way through these through the high school years. The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, Oliver Twist. We've also got Peter Pan, A Tale of Two Cities, and Great Expectations. Oh well. <laughs> Alright, so the bottom of my box was completely open, but let's just get through these. Another one to add to the bookshelf, the year, the maps changed. Notes from a young black chef. The Beautiful Struggle, another memoir from ta Coates. Y'all, this was my very first time that I've ever double purchased something by accident. <laughs> okay, um, so I completely forgot that I had already added this to our collection. Well, Cameron's collection because he read it already. Um, this one is Before the Ever After, and this one goes along with um, the Level 8 Oak Meadow English curriculum, so that's what this one is for. This is another one for Kindle, A Hearty Book of Veggie Sandwiches. Secondhand bookstores and online um, discount bookstores are such a great way to build your library. I'm so grateful to have the library that we have. Um, but it's taken a lot of patience <laughs> and effort and just knowing that I can do a lot with a little and I can do a lot with a lot. So um, I love adding these books to our shelves. But I also remember days where I just had just as much fun um, going to the library to pick up books. But it's nice to be able to build like collections that we can then annotate and write in and put sticky notes in so I'm excited to see him you know tatter these pages make these recipes a ton um put notes sticky notes all through the pages I'm looking forward to that so this one is just a book of veggie sandwiches another graphic adaptation the United States Constitution again Love these. They just bring so much of history to life. I do kind of wish that there were um, some graphic illustrators that created like softer illustrations in case 
you have some kids out there that have a hard time with some of the more, you know, graphic illustrations. But then again, I guess they are graphic novels. <laughs> I don't know. So this is the United States Constitution. Another graphic, the Great American Dust Bowl. Another one for our Mitch album collection, The Little Liar. I was able to find, I think, two of two of the collection I got from Book Outlet. Every other thing I think I got from um, Amazon, their used bookstore or um, a newer version. I had to take a quick intermission because my camera died, but we're back. Okay, so the next one I have, Harlem Hellfighters. So this is about the 369th Infantry Regiment from World War One, which I actually have no idea about, which is quite often how things go history-wise. So I'm excited to learn alongside them. Two more. We've got In the Shadow of the Fallen Towers, the seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, and years after the 9-11 attacks. This one is by the same author. Um, the Unwanted Stories of the Syrian Refugees, written and illustrated by Don Brown. Same illustration style. Another historical edition. And then this is the last one from our book outlet haul. Um, the final Mitch album, The Stranger in the Lifeboat. Pretty sure that this is the collective favorite. So Brian and I are currently reading this. We're going to be the last ones in our family to read this story. Laser <laughs> There's a quick overview of my Ali's haul. Firstly, I have two of these kits that I picked up. I really, really like these. Um, if you guys have been around for a long time, then you will definitely recognize these. I actually don't know if these are made by the same publisher, but they're the same style of book. But they just have like um, a little info booklet slash book that is in the front. And then in the back, they have like cardboard pieces for them to put together an activity which I absolutely love because it's just giving them something to put their hands to while we are reading about the information so I really really like these um we've done the shark a shark before when they were little um a rocket ship um we have the titanic I just really enjoy the idea of these books so this one is bio creations jungles um, and it was such a good price, you guys. I think I only paid $5 for this one. Um, so this one covers animal defenses, frogs, plants and fungi, monkeys, bugs. And I know it might seem like it is too young for the kids, but it's really not. Um, I, well, hmm, I'll wait till she's done making a lot of noise in the background. Okay, she's done. <laughs> um, so I, I'm really not a fan of um, putting things in a box and making them just appropriate for one particular age. I feel like creativity is all about learning how to press yourself outside of that box. So when I see a good deal, I snag it. And or um, I also pick it up just to be able to give away to friends and family, children. And then sometimes I end up, you know, before I used to do a lot of giveaways with you guys. And so I'd love to be able to get back to that too. But this is a great find. So for this one, it's create your own tropical rainforest tree. It's just super cute. Cardboard pieces, they just get to put together while we read and study about some of the information that's inside. I picked up another one, a treasure chest, ancient Egypt, undiscovering the lands of the pharaohs with six amazing card models to construct. Glossary in the back, you know I'm a fan of that. We use that with printables all the time in different ways to do word work. 
Um, and it's super easy to adapt for... It's super easy to adapt for different age ranges, but that's, again, a whole other video. <laughs> a whole other video. Anyway, so dressing the part, clothing, magic and spells during that time, warfare, fun and games. So again, as we try to touch on those types of things, then they can put their hands to the little activity that's on the back. The little activity that's on the back. There is a burial mask, a pyramid, um, a sphinx. So, to me, these two were a great find. Again, a lot of this is what you would think you would use for the earlier years. And I just really love finding ways to adapt it and still use it. So, we're a picture book family. Love reading through picture books. And, y'all, picture books are expensive. So, being able to find them at discount book shops stores online wherever is just great so this one's very pretty we love also admiring like the illustration and the writing style that's geared towards you know younger children this one is moon by allison oliver and this one i don't know if you can see it totally but i love a good big book i love a good big book y'all and this one is life size animals i'm not exactly sure i'm still mulling over this how i'm going to use this creatively but i kind of love it um it's more than 70 animals inside and they can they're calling it an illustrated safari but the goal or idea is to be able to see it in its actual you know closest to its actual sizing size comparison which i really really love. <clears throat> I picked up that one. And okay. <laughs> we, we are down to our last two items. Um, I got this children's illustrated Atlas collection. Uh, Savannah had made mention to forgetting a lot of what we definitely worked on and learned in the earlier years concerning geography. And I completely get that. Um, so I thought that having a few extra resources that are new and different would kind of help her explore slash discover. So we have this Atlas collection. It's getting difficult because I have all these books stacked behind me. But anyway, so um, I have an animal, an animal atlas, a history atlas, and just a basic atlas. I'll show you a little bit of the inside. Again, I love it when they join um, actual imagery with illustration. I just really, really love that combination. So there's that. Okay, this is the last one, friends. This is the Young Explorers Atlas set. Um, maps of the world, maps of the world's oceans. Just two books inside of this set. They're super cute. It's giving Where's Waldo vibes which I really like. <laughs> so I did pick those two up to see what we can do with those as well. And that's it, friends. Yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, thank you for hanging out with me while I unbox all the things for curriculum for this year. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. How did you guys handle um, getting all the things for the year? All right, so now it's time for me to... Clean all of these things up. <laughs> Who's going to come and help me do this? Uh, basically, just need to get them on the shelves in some kind of... Get them on the shelves in some kind of decent order. And we are ready for the year, friends. <laughs>